All right, the next video in our series of final review videos um, is going to be on the atom. So the atom, as we know, is made up of the nucleus and the electron cloud. In the nucleus, you have two different particles. The proton, which is worth one AMU, that means it has one atomic mass unit, and the neutron, which also has one atomic mass unit. In the electron cloud are the electrons, which have zero atomic mass units, and that just tells you how teeny tiny small they are, because we don't even talk about them as having mass. Um, they do have mass, they're just so, so small, and that mass is such a small portion of the overall mass of the whole atom that we don't even discuss it. Um, remember, the electrons in the electron cloud, they do not just sit there, they're moving very, very fast, it's hard to pinpoint their location at any one time. So the atoms make up all of the elements that we have. You can tell which element it is based on two different things. They have the atomic number, which is the best definition of what element it is, because each and every element has a different atomic number. And the atomic number is simply the number of protons, and our protons are positively charged. You can also describe an, um, an element by talking about its atomic mass. The atomic mass is the number of protons, again positive, plus the number of neutrons, neutral, zero charge. Now, there are some elements that have the same atomic mass. That's because the number of neutrons doesn't have to equal anything. The number of protons, atomic number, will always be different, but the number of neutrons can kind of be similar to however it feels. Um, because of that, like I said, the atomic number is the best way for you to explain what element you're talking about. <clears throat> now, these atoms join together to make up molecules or compounds. You'll see both words, so I want to introduce both words to you. Um, now, a molecule or a compound is a set ratio of a number of each number of atoms of each element. So you've got some examples, hydrogen, um, sorry, dihydrogen monoxide or H2O, water, or you have C6H12O6, which is glucose sugar. So how does this fit in with our overall picture of matter? So you have matter, which can be divided up into two ways, pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances include atoms or elements and compounds and molecules. That's it. If there's anything else, it's not a pure substance anymore. Now it's a mixture. Mixtures, you have two types. You have homogeneous mixtures, which are the same throughout. The vast majority of those are going to be a solution. A really good example of a solution is bottled water. Bottled water has all that extra minerals, dissolved things in there that you can't see, so it looks the same throughout, but there's extra stuff in there that's not part of just the compound. That's not part of just H2O. There's extra stuff in there, so it's a mixture, specifically a solution. Then you have heterogeneous mixtures. This is where you can see the different parts. Um, and it's really obvious that they're a good example of that. It's like chocolate chip cookie dough. You can easily see the different parts. Peanut butter, you can see those different parts. So how do these atoms or elements behave at different states of matter? When they're in a solid, they each have their own specific spot, and they're just there vibrating in place. They can move within that spot. You think of you sitting in the classroom. You have your desk, and you can move at your desk. You can write, you can lean back, you can lean forward, you can move some papers around, but you're not supposed to be getting up from your desk. As um, the temperature rises, they have more and more vibration until eventually they start breaking free from that one specific spot. At that point, they're considered in the liquid state. The liquid state, they're still really near each other, but they can move around more. You can think of that like if I said in within the classroom, you can get up from your desk and move around the room, but you have to stay in the classroom. You have to stay within that set volume, that set amount of space. Same with liquids. They have to stay within that set volume, that set amount of space, but they can move around whichever which way they want. Now as the temperature rises and they're moving more and more, eventually someone busts out of there. Maybe the door opens because it gets so crazy in the classroom that somebody leaves. Um, in this case, the liquid, the molecules are starting to escape that set volume. When that happens, they're now in the gas state. And the, at this point, each molecule or each atom is now a separate entity, and it can move, and it does move very quickly, as far, they spread as far out as possible, as far away from each other as they can. So you see in each of these, I had 12 molecules or atoms, whichever you prefer they be. In the solid, they're really close together. In the liquid, they're so close together, but they can move around, they're not as organized. But in the gas, they're like all over the place. I had to run out of room to put them all, because they really are separated far away from each other.